I'm just going to give you a quick run over on flashing an ASA32 board. The first thing we're going to do is, you'll hear the noise in the background, I'll plug in a USB cable and connect it to a ASA32 board that I've got here. You'll notice that a Scilabs driver appears here. This is the clean flight configurator. If I click, con I'm connected and it's all good. It's a good idea to make sure you can connect first. I'll click disconnect. You'll notice that here there's firmware flasher. If I click firmware flasher, there are a couple of options. You can choose firmware from online using that pop up there. We're not going to do that. I've already got a hex file downloaded. If you choose full chip arrays, it will erase all of the EEPROM contents. Now the EEPROM contents are like your preferences and your settings. Uh, the code itself, which we can load by loading a hex file from here, uh, the actual code itself is the program. What we're going to do here is a full chip arrays and reload everything by hand. Now you're going to say, well, from what? Well, we'll get to that later. <laughs> so first thing, load firmware. So click that. And here we go. I've got a, a clean flight build directory. Uh, it's got an object folder and I've created a hex file for NASA and also one for SP Racing. But that's a file there that we could load. Uh, I've also got one of uh, Boris's hex files with reverse LEDs here and we could choose that one. Uh, I'll just go here and choose the hex file that I've got. You can download them uh, from a variety of places. So I'll just select that and make this window a little bit more so we can see it and click open. Now at this point it just says loaded firmware. I then click flash firmware and hey presto it flashes it. So now we've replaced the operating system of the board with a new operating system. Because I did a full chip arrays all of my settings are now gone. I can't get them back. They're gone for good. Go up here and go connect. Bingo bango. That all looks good. But when I go to ports, I'll find that I've got one set to MSP and that's the connection to the computer. I've got no receiver settings. I go into the configuration. I've got a set of default values, but I don't uh, it's defaulted to a parallel uh, radio and various other things that I don't want. Uh, it doesn't have any of these other features set properly. PID tuning, well, it will always default to multi-Wii on a clean install. Now, I can change this profile number one here to use Luxfloat, which I happen to like. And when I go save here, I now get some Luxfloat defaults that were stored in the hex file. Um, these default values are not always good, but the ones I use have got reasonable defaults. These, are, I think, don't know where they came from. The receiver is not running. I haven't got my transmitter on, but it wouldn't have worked anyway because in the configuration here, uh, I'm actually using PPM and that's not selected. So I'd probably have to set that to PPM and do something on the ports. The other thing is all of your switches are under modes and none of them are set. That's a real pain, got to rebuild them all by hand. And the switches are separate. So let's say I go to modes here and I put a, uh, make it so Horizon exists there and save that. I go back to PID tuning profile number one, that's fine. Go back here, yep, that's the switch we just made. But that switch is tied to profile one. If Profile 2 happens to have multi-Wii on it, or it doesn't really matter what it's got, but if I got Profile 2, I go to modes, I haven't got that because the switch modes are profile dependent. They're completely different. Uh, as are the pitch rates and breakthrough rates and the receiver settings. These are all profile dependent. So how on earth am I going to get all of this stuff back? Well, one way of doing it is to have previously saved it. Now under setup, it's possible to do a backup button. I press backup here and I just get a, a file uh, that I can save to you know, my desktop or hard disk or somewhere. That's a backup file. Now if I go restore here, it'll 
ask me for that backup file or some backup file and try to restore the whole NASA board or whatever board you got with those settings. The only problem is that, that the version of the configurator has to actually match the version of your file. So here's configurator version 0.65 down in the bottom corner. If I try to load up a set of say, saved set of settings that, that don't match, everything will get stuffed up. So the solution is to go to the CLI uh, command line interface and go dump. Type that down there. Once you've done a dump and hit return, all of this stuff streams into the screen. This contains every setting on every tab. Everything that can be configured is in that big long text file. Now if I wanted to save the current setting uh, here, which have just got battery, fail safe and parallel, I only have to save this text and I can copy it. So if I go here, uh, copy save from that point down and go through all that, keep coming down all the way through all of this stuff here. If I dump profile, I want to come back up a little bit. If I stop at that point there, at black box device, before I get to profile, I've divided this thing into two chunks. All of this stuff up here with the features, the primary settings, serial ports, LED uh, LED colors, and all this loop time, min throttle, max throttle, uh, GPS provider, uh, VBAT scales, gyro LPF, very important, maximum angle inclination, important, more on threshold, which is how sensitive it is the gyro is to uh, being bumped when you try to arm it, uh, various other things, down to your black box rates, whether or not you're running a certain type of hardware. These are all system settings. There's one set of system settings. So if I go Command C for copy and go to a text editor application of some kind, which I have slightly off screen here, and make a new text document, I can paste that in and save that file. If I save this file, I can paste it back into the CLI and restore the CLI features from the text file. Now it just so happens I've actually got one of these text files uh, that I've already saved sitting around on the computer here. So uh, here's one here that I previously made. And all I bother to keep here is the map, the features, my serial settings, loop time and a few other things. So let's say I just copy some of that stuff down as far as there. Go copy and tab over back to my configurator. I can click it in here and go paste and hit return. Now what you'll see at the bottom of the configurator now is that it has enabled failsafe, enabled one shot, enabled black box, enabled PPM because they were features that I had here. It set the th radio map to throttle elevator on elevator and whatever R is uh, in that order and done that. So all of those settings and now my loop time is set to 1350 not the default one uh, whatever it was. Now I can go down here and run down and get some more of this stuff. Best not to do too much. Then go back here paste it in go return and now I've got my VBAT scales the way I like them. And I come down here and get the last bit of it, copy that, back voice denominator of two and paste it in. Now what I've done is I go save, this is very important, type save and press return, that's saved. If I now go back to my configuration, it just takes a little while to, to save it. All those values I just pasted in here, I've got a PPM uh, radio, the VBAT voltages are fine, my minimum throttle is different, I've got one shot on, I've got black box on, and a whole bunch of other settings that we can't see are now active. The serial ports are now different, I've got black box logging over USB, and I didn't have to do the save, that happened in the CLI. So the next thing is to have a look at the uh, actual profile itself here. So I'm going to go to profile number one and save that. Go to the CLI and go back to our text editor and grab a profile that I saved. Now you'll remember that 
we'll do a dump here. If I do this dump process and we scroll back up a bit and just stop at about this point here, where it says profile O, that is the first profile of the three profiles. This one's got one auxiliary switch currently set. Uh, you can have 19 settings there and various other things. But this includes, especially down the bottom here, your RC rates, the rate profile uh, that's currently active, and your PIDs, all those settings. So I'm going to go to a previously saved uh, document that's got my yeah, profile number one. The first thing I like to do is get these ones, the auxiliary switches, and do that first. So I'm going to copy put that over here, copy that. Uh, now I'm going to go back to Clean Flight, paste that in, come on here, go return. Now that's all I get but that'll do me. I go back to the text document. Now, why did I do them? Because they just don't seem to stick. There are a couple of bits. So I'm going to go down here, copy some of that, paste it in, hit return, and you can see it looks like it's trying to do it for me. I scroll down a bit further, get all of that, go over here, paste it in. Now, I'm not even bothering to read it. I don't care what it is. Now, here, look, that's some PIDs. We'll copy them. And we'll paste them in, and we'll come back again here. Now here are our RC rates. We're going to get maybe that bit there where it says RC profile zero, and we're going to paste that in. And we've done all that, and then the magic SAVE, save, and hit return. Now, that's all good. Click PID tuning. Now if we're really lucky, everything is going to be here. And it doesn't always work, so you just have a check. Yeah, look. Quite different PIDs from what we had, my crappy very low P values, my special very low level value. I've got roll and pitch rates which weren't configured before. The receiver has got an RC rate of 1 and Expo on both of them. I got a throttle map the way I like it. And in the modes there are all my switches. No, none of that was there before. Now if I want to uh, fix up profile number two and make it the way I'd like, I'd do the same process. So I would go to my save profile number two from before, which has got everything from the word profile down, and I would copy and paste this in. Now, I'm not going to do all of it, but I'm just going to get those lines there. We'll go to clean flight, and we've got profile two selected, so I'll go to the CLI. This time I'll just paste some in. Uh, we have text edited back again. I'll run quickly through this just to show you. Obviously, you would do the same thing for number three if you had a saved thing. So you can see it's useful to save your settings. Uh, put that in. Now you're probably wondering why don't I just do it all at once? Well, it just doesn't always work. I don't know why. They all say if you do it all at once, it can be a bit much. I'm get that rate profile one there. So you notice that's got my horizon angle attenuation factor in the new code and the various filtering, which I set very soft indeed, and paste that in. And go save. And go back to PID tuning. And we'll see whether profile 2 has now got profile 2 values. And it does. Profile number 2 I set up to just have a little bit more P, a little bit more I, a little bit more D. Uh, slightly lower roll rates so that the overall turn rate's the same. My receiver's set up exactly the same, and my switch modes are all fine. So let, we've now done two of those things, and all we've got to do is just connect. That board is now loaded and ready to fly. The third profile we haven't set up, but we can do that. So I guess that's how you do it. Uh, a couple of questions you might have is, first of all, where do I get this configurator from? What you do there is very simple. You go to Chrome. Uh, I have to upload that properly. Go to Google Chrome. And in Google Chrome, if you go Preferences, and then down here, uh, Extensions someplace, the yeah, yeah, Chrome Extensions, go down Get More Extensions, it will take you to this thing here, the Chrome Web Store. And if you type Configurator, uh, Clean Flight or something, Maybe just clean flight will do, we'll see, and hit return. There it is. 
and all you have to do is click that and you can install it. It's very straightforward. What about if you uh, load the configurator and plug in the device but it doesn't show you the Scilabs driver? Well you have to get the Scilabs driver from uh, Scilabs and uh, I haven't actually planned on mentioning this but let me just try to look here. I have a downloads folder with installers in it and one of them someplace here is a Scilabs driver I think. Uh, I might have put it someplace else, I can't remember. Where did I put it? Anyway, I can't remember. But it's basically a Scilabs driver. We might even be able to find it by just going to Chrome and, and doing that. So let's just do a search here for Scilabs driver. There we are, that's the one, a CP2010X driver. There we are, they're the ones we want. And that's because um, most of the UARTs in uh, ours are CP210X drivers. Uh, I don't know why. And so you just go download software, and there you go, Windows, Mac, or whatever, and I got one of these, that one, I think. Um, so that's how you get the driver. So I think what we've managed to cover now is the ability to connect up to an existing board, disconnect once we know it's good, go to a firmware flasher, completely erase the chip, load a hex file that we got from somewhere, flash it in, and having flashed it, connected, and using the CLI and a previously saved dump of the CLI, dump it again, previously saved chunk of this stuff, paste it back in, we've now fully restored our board the way it ought to be. Okay, well, uh, thank you, happy flying. Uh, it is indeed a complex thing. I'm just moving around the little board in my hand here, and you can see it, there we are, down and up. It's really quite a nice little thing. Looks like it's all in slow motion for some reason now, probably broken it. Uh -huh. Anyway, there you go, it all works. Bye.